Hello and welcome back. This is the art of game design. So today we're going to be talking about prototyping. Yeah, finally, we're coming to the part where things are starting to jump from your notebook into reality, into physical form. Okay. So the first thing to know about prototyping is that you should try to keep things to a minimum, right? As a, a starting point, you should start small, right? Have a, have a game that is as, as lean as possible. And then with your editor, you know, as, as development goes on, you can talk about expansions. You can talk about add-ons and the blinging, you know, we we'll all love that. Sure. And that is going to exist. That's a thing that's not going to go away, but you know, you should start small, right? And publishers like something that's a, 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 a small pitch that they can then expand on. If you start big, you know, publishers will be a little bit thrown off by that. You know, it's harder for them to, you know, take away and slim down something that's grandiose to begin with. Going back. So you, you've got your project laid out. It's looking good. It's looking interesting. It seems to be a good thing to be made into something that is playable, right? You're excited for that. That's really cool. Love that. So first things first, the very, very first prototype should be as, as stupid as like just a piece of paper cut roughly on, on top of a table, right? So almost just scribble down, you know, pieces of paper and just moving things about. You know, this movement is important, right? Especially in boards and card games, right? But also for video games, you know, to get an idea of how, I don't know, a platformer would work and how the mechanics of a platformer could work and how the pieces, you can also do this with pieces of paper, right? But then after this, after this sort of a pre-prototype thing, we're going into the prototype, which is a little bit more uh, presentable at least. In this, you got to do a few things. You know, number one, you got to do the, the the bare minimum of of um, of components and, and the sizes of the components. So, instead of doing the full size of your board in its finished version and its idealized version, you can do a, like something that's half the size, if possible. If you can shrink it down to half the size, even though when you're pitching it, you're going to say, "Well, this is half the size. It's going to be bigger than this." Right. And if you can do instead of just regular size, humongously huge uh, jumbo cards, you know, just do standard cards and you can, you know, again, in your pitch, say this will be jumbo cards. Right. And things like that. Shrink as much as you can. And instead of using big pieces of wood, use just small cubes, different colors, you know, and then again, you'll have the note saying this. These won't be cubes. These will be meeples or, or miniatures or whatever. So try to get those components to their smallest portable size possible. This will help you in, in bringing the game to places, you know, and, and also it will help you to get, make use of the things you got around. So you gotta, you gotta think about what you got around. You got a bunch of cubes left from a game that you don't play or, 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 or you bought an expansion that's somewhat uh, useless. You're never going to play with that expansion, but you can make use of the components there. And you know, you've got these meeples lying around. Make use of that, right? Bring those together. And you already are already scratching off a few, a few things from your components list, right? You got your components list of your project. You're already ticking off a few things. Okay. I got five cubes. Yeah, I can do that. I got a couple of dice. Yeah, that's done. Check. Yeah, I got this and this and this and this and this. So just by, you know, uh, sort of recycling, you already have a chunk of your prototype done. You just set it aside, do it in, in separate bags or, or whatever, and then you already got a big chunk of the prototype done. The things that you normally don't have done is the board. Oh, normally you will have to do the board and it doesn't have to have illustrations. Ideally, no illustrations. Publishers actually prefer when you pitch things without any sort of art. It's easier for them to work, right? They don't, they can separate things, you know, and they can, you know, imagine what they would like to see in terms of art. If you push something already with a lot of art, it's hard for them to do that imagination. It's hard for them to, to, you know, pick up something and work on something. If it's already uh, sort of biased towards a certain theme or towards a certain art style. 
So they actually prefer when it's you know clean and, and, and gray and boring in that sense. So no arts, just you know uh, names of things, icons, that's fine. Icons is always a plus. If you're already working on a few icons, we'll put them out there. Make sure you make a reference for that. Uh, a card reference, small card reference for those icons with your prototype. And so the board, ideally you do a simple A3 print or two A4 prints, then you glue them together and you don't need to be actual cardboard behind. You know, this folds into four and it's nice and pocketable and, and just fits with the rest of the things. Doesn't have to have a board. Some designers like the idea of using an acrylic, transparent acrylic with, uh, a, with the size of the, the board and that you lay that on top and it just lays flat and nice. You don't need that, but it's, it's a touch. And some, like myself, I do like to glue a board to the back. I use the kids' cereal boxes for that purpose, you know, because there, there are always a ton of them in the, in the bin. So I just pull one out and just cut it out and then cut it to four again. So it folds, we can, I can then show you how to do that fold nicely. We can look at that in a more detailed video. And the cards are normally, I think, the, 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 the prototyping part that's a little bit more tricky doing decks of cards and doing and doing a, a quantity, a significant quantity of cards. It's normally where things get tricky and, and it's not that complicated. You pick up a, an A4 sheet, divide it in eight and no, sorry, nine with margins. So you leave the margins and then you do a grid three by three with, uh, with, the, with the measurements of your standard um, card which is Magic the Gathering size standard, um, which is, I think eight point something through five points. I mean, I don't know the, I, I will then link the, 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 the measurements and things. And within those rectangles, you do a little margin as well. So you make a smaller rectangle within each rectangle of the three by three grid, right? This is so that you can do uh, a smaller size sleeve. If, you, if your sleeves somewhat are smaller or, or, or tighter, or if you have larger sleeves, or, or if some sleeves are different shapes, you know, and, you, and you're trying to recycle all of these sleeves, it's nice to have a little bit of a margin where you can cut and not cut away information that's important on the card. So try to then put the information that, we, that is important within that smaller rectangular and have a little bit of margin. So if you need to cut a little bit more to fit, you can cut, okay? And within that, that, that smaller rectangle, you need to have normally a title for each card. Ideally, as much iconography as possible and as little text as possible. But it is common for your very first prototype to not have any iconography thought of. So I guess it's okay if in the very first prototype you have text, you know? And, uh, and a, a chunk of text in the bottom or in somewhere, it's okay. But ideally, start thinking about icons as soon as possible. Ideally, you should already do icons when you're doing your project, right? Before prototyping. But it's okay if the first one doesn't have them. And um, and also, don't worry about card backs, right? We talked about sleeves, solid back color sleeves are the perfect ones because they just don't require card backs, right? So you do just fronts, right? You do only fronts on those prints, just do fronts, 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 fronts. And then if there's different decks, you can use different colored sleeves to distinguish them from one another, right? So it's the objective cards, or these are the player cards, or these are the, you know, whatever event cards, you know, you can use different colored sleeves to distinguish them from each other without having the hassle of printing more, more, more just for the card backs. It's just a waste of time of paper and, and it's not worth it. Different colored sleeves is the way to go. And these are normally something that we already have lying around. A couple of them from, you know, when I was playing magic or whatever, and I'm no don't longer use them. I can just take out the cards and recycle those. Okay. And finally, there's also, there's all normally a few miscellaneous things that you kind of need to do, like counters that have a specific icon on them. You know, those are a little bit more boring to do, a little harder to do, but this, the thing is normally to try to fit as much as those in a single sheet of A4, you know, the 
damage counters or I don't know, uh, you know, different things that have, you know, special effects or, or timed effects or, or debuffs or buffs and you know these, these different types of things they have that require a specific iconography you do as much as those as you can on a single a4 sheet try to make a grid as possible because it's easier to cut try to make a square grid or something like that and add as much as those as possible to a single sheet print it out glue it onto a, a cereal box or an old cardboard lying around let it dry once it dries you cut the grid all the way right cut it all and you have these little squares with icons that fit anywhere and it's nice and ready to go if you want to do double side make sure that your grid aligns with the back and make sure that you flip one of the images right because when you're doing it it has to be mirrored right the the the, the token that's on the top left it has to be his back has to be on the top right so you need to flip the image to match it never really works very well, but it's a prototype. Come on. If it's, if it's readable, it's good enough, right? And then, yeah, this is pretty much the, I think I'm, I've, I'm not missing something. Am I missing something? You need a box, but any box is fine. Sometimes prototypes can fit on, 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 on like these sleeves, uh, these A4 sleeves. You can fit a prototype in there. If you, if your board, if your board is like, just paper and you know, your components are just a couple of cubes and cards you can normally fit them on a single sleeve you don't need to have a box for that um but i think you know having boxes from old items you know i love the the, the small ikea boxes you can you know store stuff in there and make a nice little tiny prototype that's fits in your pocket almost that's great and um i think i think i'm missing a few details here and there well, we'll have to look into the into the the minutia of these things, right? These layouts need to be, you know, need to be a little bit more practical. But we'll do that on another lesson. So for now, just keep in mind to keep it as lean as possible, as eco friendly as possible. We live in different times now. We need to consider that, you know, we don't. There's no planet B. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Goodbye. Thanks so much for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel for more free videos like this one. If you are looking for more advanced lessons or wish to show me your own work, check out my Patreon for more information. If you like this video, why not share it with a friend or a colleague that is interested in game design? I'll see you in the next one.